Okay, welcome everyone. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. Um, can we just open in prayer? Is, would someone be willing to open us in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for bringing us here first class, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, please, my dear students, class, Heavenly Father, help us to learn something new through my Heavenly Father. And help us to keep it in mind, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity here to uh, learn and understand about your word, Heavenly Father. And please, my dear students, class, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you. Um, so, welcome back. Um, I think we received, I received everyone, I mean, whoever sent in their names of uh, who they're going to be presenting on. I've got most people's, um, but if you haven't yet sent it in, please do. Um, deadline is over, so your marks will be affected, um, but yeah, you still have to do the presentation, otherwise you won't get any marks. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't yet sent in the name, send it in, and um, we'll have to then look at how you prepare for your presentation and all of that. So I'll post the dates uh, today or tomorrow, so you all can just look on Google Classroom, the dates for presentations and all of that. Um, sorry, I'll just pull up the map for this Okay, so last week we uh, stopped at where Paul arrived at Athens in the second missionary journey. So we'll continue from there. Um, I think that's Acts 17, verse 16 is where we stopped, right? I'm just going to... I'll share screen with the map, okay, thank you. So I'll just share screen so that we have the map up. Sorry. Okay, okay, thank you. So yeah, we just stopped at that introduction of uh, where he'd arrived at Athens and we looked at a few different things about Athens, um, mainly looked at the Epicurean and Stoicism and what was the difference between the two. Um, so a few more things about Athens is uh, it was very religious. Uh, so uh, there are many ways we can recognize how religious it was. One is in Acts itself, it says that Paul saw a lot of idols in that place and he was disturbed by it. Um, but uh, it, it was said that Athens had more idols than any other part of Greece. So it had more idols than uh, any other place. It was named after the Greek goddess Athena. Um, it, uh, so there was someone named uh, Gaius Petronius who was a Roman courtier. And he had said uh, satirically that it was easier to find a god in Athens than to find a man. So that's how uh, how common idol worship was there. Um, and it was also seen to be as one big altar, one great offering to God. They viewed it uh, with such pride that there was so much idol worship and it was so strongly religious. Um, so Paul chooses to engage the people in ways that are relevant to them, right? Because it's such a religious place and it was, was also such a strong place of learning. So it was a center of art, of science, of learning, uh, of philosophy. Uh, 
so there were lots of thinkers in that place. There were lots of people who liked to engage their minds. And so when Paul talks to them uh, and sharing the gospel with them, he is using all of that, all of those parts of their culture uh, in the ways he presents the gospel to them. Uh, so we see first that he talks about uh, the idol or the thing that they have to an unknown God, right? They have that uh, stand. And so he starts there with the gospel. But then as he continues, he presents it in a way uh, that would also address the intellectuals of that time. Uh, so he uses uh, the opportunities that are available to him and the spaces that he chooses to be in. So he goes to the marketplace where uh, people were engaging in such discussions. He goes there to also share his views, to share the gospel in that space. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, Agora was the marketplace of that time. And in the marketplace was where political, governmental, uh, philosophical discussions were held. And so philosophers would go there and they would start to engage with people on questions regarding uh, different things like meaning of life, what the people believed in. All of that happened in the marketplace. Um, so when Paul goes and shares there, uh, there are people who disagree with him and then they call him to the Areopagus to share his faith. Um, so we look a little bit more at that. Let's just go to Acts 17. Uh, and maybe we can read from verse 16 uh, to verse 23. Okay. Someone can read from verse 16 to 23. Now, while Paul waited for them at uh, Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city was given over to idols. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him. And some said, what does this blabber want to say? Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the um, Athenians and the foreigners who were there spend their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. Okay, thank you. So um, the Areopagus was... Uh a place where uh, leaders of the city would gather. And uh, that is where a lot of the judicial or the cultural or educational religious decisions were uh, made. So that's where big decisions were discussed about. Uh, so Paul is invited here to these group of leaders to share about what uh, what is this new God you're talking about. And he observes what is happening in the city. He recognizes that there is so much uh, reverence to gods right, given there. And he uses that to start in his sharing of the gospel. Um, he also uses this one place where there is obvious, they recognize their own ignorance right, to the unknown god. They themselves are saying, we don't know who this god is. And he's using that as an opening to say, let me tell you about this god. Uh, and so he starts to share about Jesus in this uh, in this context. As he presents to them, there are different responses to what he shares. So we read in verses 32 to 34. Um, when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council. Some of the people became followers of Paul and believed. Among them was Dionysius, a member of the Areopagus, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. Uh, so 
again, that different range of responses. OK, this is versus uh, 32 to 34 of Act 17. OK, uh, but what does Paul do? He preaches the resurrection of the dead. He doesn't like preach only the things that they want to hear or the things that are going to be accepted by them. He uses their culture, he uses uh, things from their own uh, poets, all of those things to present the gospel, but he presents the whole gospel. He presents the whole truth to them and then gives them the opportunity to respond. Uh, so some people believe, some people are laughing, are mocking him, um, and some people want to hear more. Uh, we get that range of responses. But the beautiful thing is that he's gone right up to the leaders of the city, and we see that some of them actually become believers. Uh, so an amazing uh, opening that God makes for the gospel in that area. Uh, from there, uh, we see that uh, um, Paul then uh, leaves Athens, okay, and then he goes on to Corinth, um, but he leaves Timothy there, I think. Oh, he sends Timothy from there, right? Yeah, First Thessalonians 3, 1 and 2, if someone can read, he sends Timothy to Thessalonica. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God and a fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. Okay. Thank you. So uh, if we look on the map, so he was in Athens, um, right then near the coast and then he goes across so all of this is in greece right he goes across that little bridge that's there into corinth uh, on the other side so uh let's go on into acts 18 if someone can read acts 18 uh, 1 to 17. Acts 18, 1 to 17. Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 17. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born to Pontus, who had recently come from Italy, and his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome. <clears throat> And he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. For by occupation, they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. But when they opposed him and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, Your blood be upon your heads. I am clean. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. The Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, uh, hear, hearing, believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. When Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with uh, one accord rose up against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuades men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of uh, wrongdoing or wicked crimes, O Jews, there would be a reason why I should bear with you. But if it is a question of words and names and your own law, Look to it yourself, 
for i do not want to be a judge of such matters and he drove them from the judgment seat then all the greeks took sosthenes the ruler of the synagogue and beat him before the judgment seat but galio took no notice of these things thank you okay so we see um here when paul arrives at athen at corinth he first meets aquila and priscilla and they connect uh, not only because they are jews so they are from a jewish background but also because they have this common trade of tent making so that is working with leather uh so here he uh, chooses to uh, get engaged with tent making and he's doing this work in uh, corinth so it is quite a strategic thing uh, that he's doing because corinth is at the port and there's a lot of uh merchants coming in and going out from the port there's a lot of um basically a lot of trading that happens from corinth so there are people coming in from all over uh, other parts of asia coming in uh bringing their goods taking goods from corinth taking it to other places because it is a port city so to be right at the marketplace means he's able to reach uh people from lots of different uh, other places who are coming in and going out uh and he is with the local like with the local people as well because that's the marketplace he's with the common people uh but at the same time he is also going to the synagogue so he's also trying to reach the jews of that time so in each place he was going to uh very strategic places right in the previous place in athens he went to the thinkers he went to the leaders um in the areopagus and now here he goes to the and the areopagus kind of opened up for him because he went to the marketplace so being strategic in that reaching people where they are and knowing where are the right openings to be able to go and share like in athens uh, in the marketplace is where religious discussions were happening so he could go there and he could talk about uh, his faith um, but here he goes to the synagogues he goes to the marketplace where he can meet with people and share in that context as well um now again in corinth uh it was that greek culture where philosophy is uh really like something that they uh pursue like they pursue wisdom and uh, all of that so when he's reaching out to the people in the marketplace he's actually going against that because the people who in the marketplace were considered as the commoners the people of a lower standard okay and the people who were uh, engaging in philosophy were the more elite in that culture so here he's chosen to go to these people with the gospel and we see in the letter to the corinthians uh, how that plays out this distinction between those who are elite and those who are common and uh, that wisdom of apollos versus paul all of those things uh, so here he goes to them and he goes to the marketplace and he's working there and he's also sharing in the synagogues and as usual there are some of the jews who are not happy about what he's doing and so they start to oppose him uh, at the same time if you remember silas and timothy remained in macedonia right so paul had the vision to go to macedonia they went there they went to philippi uh, we talked about that earlier so if we go back to the map um they were in troas here in asia right and from there uh, paul has a vision of someone calling him to macedonia and so they go into neapolis they go into philippi uh and they are in this area apollonia and all of that and then uh, because of persecution paul leaves philippi but silas and timothy stay there and they continue the work that was going on so now here silas and timothy come from macedonia and join paul in corinth again uh and once they come paul is able to more focus on his preaching and reaching out to the jews uh and again we see here that because they reject the gospel he then goes to the gentiles and there is a really good response in corinth from a variety of people so uh we have a few people people named here in verse 7 there's titius justus uh who was a gentile then we have the synagogue leader crispus in verse 8 uh 
uh, we have um, in verse 17, Sostenes, who was also a synagogue leader. Um, then later on in Romans 16, Erastus is named Romans uh, 16, 1, that other area which is near Corinth, Phoebe is mentioned. So again on the map, if you see Corinth and Sencria is right next to it. So while Paul was at Corinth, he was also, I think, reaching out to places around there. So we see uh, in Romans 16, 1, where Phoebe is mentioned as someone from the church in Sencria. So there are other churches and local congregations being established while he's at Corinth itself. Uh, so Paul spends a total of 18 months in Corinth uh, when he's encouraged by God. So he has this vision where God says, continue to preach. I'm protecting you because there are people here who will respond to the gospel. So based on this vision, he continues to do his work in Corinth. And uh, he spends 18 months there preaching and teaching and establishing the church. Um, Let's go on from there, verses 18 to 28, the same, Acts 17. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. So Paul still reminds remained a good while reminded a good while then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for syria and priscilla and aquila were with him he had his hair cut off at sancria for he had taken a walk and he came to ephesus and left them there but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the jews when they asked him to stay a longer time with him, he didn't he did not cons consent, but took leave from them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, but I will return again to you. God's God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at C Caesarea and uh, gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. Okay, for uh, now, maybe we'll stop there. So this is where uh, his second missionary journey ends. Okay, so he we see that he's gone back all the way to Antioch, his home uh, church. So what all happens? He is in Corinth. He leaves Corinth uh, with Priscilla and Aquila. They go to Sancria. He shaves his head because of some bow he's made. Goes to Ephesus. Uh, just meets with the people there briefly. And then his goal is to go back to Jerusalem for the feast. So he uh, doesn't stay in Ephesus, although they're they're asking him to stay. He goes to Jerusalem, meets the church there, and then returns back to Antioch from there. Uh, so... Uh, all in all, this uh, this period of time uh, is about three years that he spends in the second missionary journey. And uh, it's longer than the previous, um, the previous journey. So there he traveled about to 1,900, 1,900 miles. And here he travels about 2,500. So he's extended his reach through the second missionary journey. And he's gone to more places than he did in the first time around. OK, so um, maybe we can uh, read that last part of that same chapter, 24 to 28. Now a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria and eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being free, fervent in spirit. He spoke and taught he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord. Though he knew only the baptism of John, so he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him 
the way of God more accurately. And when he decided to cross to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Thank you. So, um, so um, while Paul is now in Antioch, he's left Ephesus, right? He leaves Ephesus and he goes to Jerusalem and then to Antioch. Priscilla and Uncle stay in Ephesus. And while they are there, Apollos comes there. And uh, they meet him. They see that he uh, is a great preacher, but his knowledge of Jesus and salvation uh, through Jesus is not complete. So they teach him and then they send him to Corinth and he goes to Corinth and uh, encourages the church there. So while Paul is in Antioch, uh, we also have an account of Peter going to Antioch, and we'll go to that passage in Galatians. Uh, but just some highlights from this second missionary journey. So Paul goes to very key cities during uh, the second missionary journey, right? What were some of the key cities he went to? In the second missionary journey, yeah. Yeah, Corinth, yeah, Athens, yeah. What's that, sorry? Athens is the only one. And Philippi, right, in Macedonia. OK, so some very key big cities where he could reach a lot of people from that region and from other regions as well. Um, then he also, these were like, cities that were influencing other parts of that uh, of the region they were in right so there was trade happening there there was uh, learning there were people who were uh, like considered as the wise people of that time the learned intellectuals of that time so he was going and influencing all of those people uh, but wherever he was going he was taking the gospel the pure gospel right that foolish gospel, uh, the gospel that was considered foolish by the people, he preached the cross of Christ. He didn't change his preaching. He didn't change the message that he was preaching. Uh, but he did it also in the power of the Holy Spirit. So uh, accompanying whatever he was doing were miracles and signs and wonders uh, that while he was preaching. And he took time to understand the cultures. He took time to understand what was happening in that place and preaching the gospel to them in a way that they would understand. Um, but he also took the pure gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those things didn't change uh, no matter where he was. OK, and uh, and you can see throughout a dependence on the Holy Spirit, like listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit at every point. Right, whether he stays in a place, whether whether he doesn't go to a place, whether he moves to a new place, uh, all of those things were spirit led, uh, and so he is able to see also the Holy Spirit then accomplishing the work that God wanted to do through him. Um, yeah. So while he is back in Antioch, we have an account of Peter going there. We'll just read from Galatians two eleven to twenty. to 20. Now when Peter had gone to Antioch, I withstood him to, to his face because he was to be blamed. But before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. And the rest of the Jews also played the hypocrite with him, so that even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you, being a Jew, live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, 
knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, even when we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is Christ therefore a minister of sin? Certainly not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Thank you. So this happens when Paul is in between the second missionary journey and the third missionary journey. So he's back in Antioch and Peter goes there. Uh, now, Peter is actually a senior apostle technically, right, uh, to Paul. But Paul isn't afraid to correct Peter when he's seeing him do something wrong. So uh, being able to correct fellow leaders in the church, uh, to call them back to the truth, no matter even if they are senior to you, right? Uh, so that's something that Paul is not afraid to do because what Peter did was affecting other people. It was not just that Peter was doing wrong, but seeing Peter, other leaders and other people were also then uh, yeah, following him. So uh, that's just such an important thing to have the courage to uh, correct someone like that um, and to call them and to like call them out on what they're doing as wrong. Uh, so we see Paul doing that and then um, obviously his respect for Peter, all of that doesn't change, uh, but he is true to whatever God has said, like right? through Christ is uh, how we are saved. And so we will not continue to follow the law. Uh, we will walk as uh, followers of Christ uh, and depend on Christ for salvation. Uh, so from there, we go into Paul's third missionary journey, which starts from Acts 18.23 onwards. Now, in his third missionary journey, Paul doesn't go into any new places. The first and second missionary journey, uh, he's gone to new places, established new churches. But this third missionary journey, he's just going to the churches that are already established and strengthening the work, uh, strengthening the leaders, all of those things uh, through this time. Uh, this is also a longer journey, uh, mostly because he spends a long time in Ephesus. Okay, so the journey lasts four years, but out of those four years, three years he spends in Ephesus. And uh, the length of the journey, the miles traveled is the same as the second missionary journey. So he does about 2,500 miles of travel. Uh, so we'll see here what are all the places that he goes to. So first he goes to Galatia and Phrygia. I should probably change the map that we are uh, looking at. OK, so we see here again that uh, Paul starts from Antioch, and he goes to these regions of Galatia here and Phrygia here. Uh, that's where he starts. And then from there, he goes on to Antioch of Pisidia, uh, and he goes to strengthen uh, the churches that were in those regions, in Derby, in Lystra, 
in Iconium and in Antioch. This was his third visit to all of these places. Um, now, even though there were other cities in that region, he, in that time, he doesn't choose to stop and preach there. So uh, there was Colossae, Laodicea, there's uh, Hierapolis. Um, all of them were right in that region. But he chooses not to uh, stop in any of those places. If we read in Colossians 2, 1, somebody can just read that for us. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. Yeah, so he's saying here that he's never met uh, the people in the church in Laodicea uh, because he chose not to go there with the gospel. So even here, being like there was opportunity, he was in the area, he could go to these places. But knowing like, okay, this is the goal uh, for this journey. We are going to go to all the places where the church is already established. We're going to go there and strengthen the work that has already been done not being distracted by oh, there are places around here, we can go with the gospel to these places, uh, knowing the goal, knowing the purpose, knowing what needs to be done at that time. Uh, he's already gone to new places. He's already done that work. And the time now is to strengthen the work that was already done. OK, uh, then from there, he goes on to Ephesus. And this is where he spends three out of four years uh, of that missionary journey he spends in Ephesus. And uh, here he'll spend uh, time with the church, uh, talking and like raising up leaders and uh, also talking to new people about the gospel. Um, and from there, word spreads across Asia. So uh, there are other places that are affected in Asia through the preaching that happens there. Uh, so let's look at verses 8 onwards from Acts 18. Uh, and we'll read from verses 8 to verse 22. Acts 18, 8 to 22. <clears throat> then Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord 18 right uh, 18 oh sorry 19 you're right 19 verse verse 8 ah, so now we are 19 verse 8 onwards okay. uh, Acts chapter 19 8 to 22 and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and pursuing concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them, them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of the Tyrannus. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord, Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought uh, from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Then some of the... Uh, <clears throat> Verse? verse 13. Yeah. Yeah. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, We exorcise you by, by the Jesus from <laughs> whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them power overpowered them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. 
This became known both to all Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified, and many who had believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in a side of all, and they counted up the value of them, and it to totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Thank you. Um, okay, yeah, we'll continue from there later. So, um, so Paul goes to Ephesus. Now, when Paul goes to Ephesus, Apollos is in Corinth. Okay, so Apollos had gone uh, from Ephesus to Corinth, right? And then Paul comes to Ephesus. Um, we read earlier that. Uh, when he comes, he meets the people whom um, Apollos had preached to, and they had not received the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is in um, Acts 19.6, where he places his hand on them, and the Holy Spirit comes on them, and they start to speak in tongues and prophesy. And there's about 12 people uh, at the start of his work there. Okay, so from there, he then goes into the synagogues and begins to preach. Um, so there are some um, really powerful things that I mentioned here in terms of signs, miracles, all of those things that are happening. Uh, so God was doing unusual miracles through Paul. Uh, and not at a time, not in his, like all of these things are not mentioned in the first and second time around, right? In those first and second missionary journeys. This is his third missionary journey. And we're seeing that signs and miracles were continuing. They were not just continuing, they were getting even greater. Um, it's just something for us to hold on to that. Uh, it shouldn't be that these things are dying out slowly, like these miracles last for some time and slowly dies out, but that we should be increasing in our practice and in our expectation of what God is going to do through the ministries, uh, even through the revivals that are happening, that God will only increase the work that is being done. Um, so... He leaves here and then, uh, I mean, he. we're seeing all of these miracles and then we see this story of the uh, person who is demon-possessed. And through that, there's actually a powerful work that God does of breaking uh, some of the sorcery and the witchcraft that is happening in that time, right? Because of that one, uh, the, the seven sons of Sceva, who are people who practice that, when they see that Jesus is greater than the work that they are doing, uh, they begin to be afraid and they come and confess, uh, right, what they're practicing and they give all of that up. Uh, so all of these things are just like powerful ways in which God is moving, breaking, um, breaking the, the work of the enemy in that place, breaking uh, some strongholds that are there, breaking uh, demonic powers that are at work there uh, to bring people uh, into the kingdom of God. Um, so earlier we see when he's preaching again, uh, there is some uh, opposition to the work. And then he continues to preach. So verse 9, he continues to preach in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. So uh, that was sort of like uh, either Tyrannus was uh, a philosopher and he was preaching in um, this hall. And so Paul was also using that hall. Or it was a hall that was rented out by Tyrannus, and Paul was using it to preach uh, one of those two things. So for two years, he continues to preach in this place. And from that place, the rest of Asia is being affected. So it's not just that he's preaching in Ephesus, but Jews and Greeks from the surrounding area are hearing the word of God uh, through this preaching. And uh, he's able to impact other regions from Ephesus. This location where missionary journey begins, like mm. there is a star for Antioch, and there is one more Antioch in between also. Yeah. So uh, the the Antioch in Syria is where Paul was from. So that's his uh, considered where. Oh, there is two. There are two Antiochs. Yeah. So. 
<laughs> yeah, so they are in two different regions altogether, right? So there's one in Syria and there's one in Pisidia. Uh, so the Antioch in Syria is where Paul always returned after every missionary journey, goes back to Antioch in Syria. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where um, Barnabas and Paul first start their work. So uh, in Syria, and it's considered Paul's home church, which is why he keeps going back there uh, and spending a few years in between each missionary journey. Uh, so this Antioch in Pisidia, um, I'm not sure if there are any, I'm sure there are some stories we covered but I can't remember any of them now. Um, but uh, yeah, so that is just in that region in Asia that he is traveling through. Okay, so um, yeah, so we see that all of these sorcerers, they come back, they uh, give, give up the work that they are doing because they are filled with fear when they see what happens to the sons of Sceva. Um, and we go to the end, uh, verses 21 to 22 of Acts 19. If someone can just read that. When these things were accomplished, Paul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. Okay, so he continues the work in Asia. So he's already planning ahead, right? He uh, had a plan to go to Rome uh, from that time, uh, but he knows that the work in Macedonia, the work in Achaia has to also be strengthened. And so he sends others there because he feels that he needs to stay in Ephesus, continuing what is happening. He's able to see, right, that God is working there. And so he recognizes that he needs to stay there to uh, be part of what God is doing. But also recognizing the need in Macedonia and Achaia, he sends uh, Timothy and Erastus to Macedonia to uh, meet the churches there. Um, so. He's able to do that because he has raised other leaders. He's raised Timothy, he's raised Erastus as people who can do the work that he was doing. Uh, if, if he had not raised those leaders, then he would be trying to go and go to these places, go continue this work, also go to Rome, also go to Jerusalem, which would be impossible for him to do uh, like within the short time that he has. Uh, so because he had leaders that he had taken with him, who were also familiar with the churches, who were also able to do the work that he was doing, he's able to hand off some of that work to them. So we'll stop there and uh, continue from there tomorrow. Thank you all. Thank you uh, to all of you who joined online.